Hello. How are you? Welcome to another little bit of Terry Pratchett's I Shall Wear Midnight, part of the Tiffany Aiken series. Before I start, I need to just say hello, good night, sleep tight to Tess and to Noah. Mum messaged me earlier on, commented on one of the um, stories on there and said that you listen every night before you fall asleep. Oh my goodness, that is some going all the way over in Canada as well. Whew. I travel well. Um, My question for you though, Tess and Noah, is what song did you have tonight? I'd like to know. What song was it before Mr. S tonight? Everybody else? Hello? <laughs> it's a lovely day here in the UK. It's... It's about 26 degrees, which, okay, I know that for some people who have commented on here before, 26 isn't that hot, but if you've ever had UK 26 degrees, it's just that bleh, that kind of gross old sticky heat. When I've been abroad and it's been in the 40s or something, it's nice, it's quite pleasant. <laughs> but here, 26 degrees, no, it's just, mm, it's just not one thing or another. It's just sticky, icky, yuck. So, um... I'm a little bit early tonight because tonight I have to do the mission of the dad barbecue. And those dads out there know that a dad barbecue is a very big deal. So tonight I'm early because it is dad barbecue night. Uh, also, another thing, I'm sorry, I will get onto the story. Um, I wasn't here last night because something exciting happened in my life. No, I didn't have another baby. <laughs> Since February, my I haven't had a car. Since February, my car broke down and I haven't been able to afford to get it fixed. However, after saving, 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 I was able this week to get it fixed. Last night, I got my car back. Since February. So, um, last night, you'll have to excuse me, I did go out for a lovely drive and screamed with glee all my way around <laughs> as I drove. It felt so good to be independent again. Ah, <sighs> So anyway, that's where I was last night. But without further ado, two, two minutes and 30 seconds in, let's start our story. So, um, do you remember that Tiffany spoke with our old nurse, didn't she? The Duke died, and then the nurse blamed Tiffany, accused her of stealing, of witchery. I can't remember what my favourite line was now. Um, oh no, and I and I don't huss or something, wasn't it? Do you remember? <laughs> I can't remember where it was. Um, um, um. Oh, I can't find it now. Something I'm not brazen and I don't huss or something she said do you remember so um yeah no I I just can't find it now what a shame what a shame but anyway she just spoke to um the other guard didn't she who was saying that the baron had been taken downstairs anyway we'll pick it up from there light dawned oh you mean doctoring I should hope not this isn't about making the poor soul better I'll do it by myself, but thank you for asking anyway. This is women's work. Exactly why it's women's work, I don't know, she said to herself as she arrived in the crypt and rolled up her sleeves. The young guard had even thought to bring down a dish of soil and a dish of salt. Well done, your granny, she thought. At least someone had taught a boy something useful. She cried as she made the old man presentable, as Granny Weatherwax called it. She always cried. It was a needful thing, but you didn't do it where anyone else could see, not if you were a witch. People wouldn't expect that. It would make them uneasy. She stood back. Well, the old boy looked better than he had done yesterday, she had to admit. As a final touch, she took two pennies out of her pocket and laid them gently over his eyelids. Those were the old cost customs taught to her by Nanny Og, but now there was a new custom known only to her. She leaned on the edge of the marble slab with one hand and held the bucket of water in the other. She stayed there, motionless, until the water in the bucket began to boil and ice was forming on the slab. She took the bucket outside and tipped its contents down the drain. The castle was bustling when she'd finished, and she left people to get on with things. She hesitated as she stepped out of the castle and stopped to think. People often didn't stop to think. 
they thought as they went along. Sometimes it was a good idea. Just to stop moving, that is, in case he moved the wrong way. Roland was the Baron's only son, and as far as Tiffany knew, his only relative, or at least his only relative who was allowed to come anywhere near the castle. After some horrible and expensive legal bat fighting, Roland had succeeded in banishing the dreadful aunts, the Baron sisters, who frankly even the old Baron thought were as nasty as a pair of old ferrets as any man should find down the trousers of his life. But there was another person who should know, who was in no conceivable way at all kin to the Baron, but was, nevertheless, well, someone who should know something as important as this as soon as possible. Tiffany headed up to the Fiegel Mound to see the Kelder. Amber was sitting outside when Tiffany arrived, doing some sewing in the sunlight. Hello, miss, she said cheerfully. I'll just go and tell Mrs. Kelder that you're here. And with that, she disappeared down the hole as easily as a snake, just as Tiffany had once been able to do. Why had Amber gone back there? Tiffany wondered. She had taken her to the aching farm to be safe. Why had the girl walked up the chalk to the mound? How had she even remembered where it was? Very interesting child, that, said a voice, and the toad, remember him, stuck his head out from under a leaf. I must say, you look extremely flustered, miss. The old baron is dead, said Tiffany. Well, only to be expected. Long live the baron, said the toad. He's not going to live long, said Tiffany. He's dead. No, croaked the toad. It's what you're supposed to say. When a king dies, you have to immediately announce that there is another king. It's important. I wonder what a new one's going to be like. Rob anybody says he's a wet Nelly who is not fit to lick your boots and has scorned you very badly. Whatever the circumstances of the past, Tiffany was not going to let that one go by unchallenged. I don't need anybody to lick anything from my boots, thank you very much. Anyway, he's not their baron, is he? The Fiegels pride themselves on not having a lord. Uh, you are correct in your submission, said the toad ponderously, but you must remember that they also pride themselves on having as much as possible a drink at the slightest possible excuse, which leaves them of an uncertain temper, and that the Baron quite definitely believes that he is, de facto, the owner of all the property hereabouts, a claim that stands up in law, although I am sorry to say that I can no longer do the same. <laughs> But a girl, now, she is something strange. And you noticed that? Haven't I noticed? Tiffany thought quickly. What should I have noticed? Amber was just a kid. She had not be, she had seen her around, not so quiet as to be worrying, not so noisy as to be annoying. And that was it. But then she thought, the chickens. That was strange. She can speak fegal, said the toad. And I don't mean all that Crivens business. Just That's just the patois. I mean, the serious, old-fashioned stuff that the Kelder speaks, the language that they spoke from wherever it was they came from before they came from there. I'm sorry, with preparation I'm sure I could make a better sentence. He paused. I don't understand a word of Fiegel myself, but a girl seems to have just picked it up. And another thing, I'll swear she's been trying to talk to me in toad language. I'm not much good at it myself, but a little bit of understanding did come with the... Shape change, as it were. Are you saying that she understands unusual words? said Tiffany. I'm not certain, said the toad. I think she understands meaning. Are you sure? said Tiffany. I've always thought she was a bit simple. Simple? said the toad. He seemed to be enjoying himself. Well, as a lawyer, I can tell you that something that looks very simple indeed can be incredibly complicated, especially if I'm being paid by the hour. The sun is simple, a sword is simple, a storm is simple. Behind everything simple is a huge tale of complicated. Amber poked her head out of the hole. Here, Mrs. Kelder says... <laughs> I can't remember what voice I did for Amber now. Mrs. Kelder says to meet her in the chalk pit. <laughs> she says excitedly. I'm sure she's gone from north to south now, hasn't she? Anyway. There was a faint cheering coming from the chalk pit as Tiffany lowered herself gingerly through the careful camouflage. She liked the pit. It seemed impossible to be truly unhappy there, with the damp white walls cradling her and the light of the blue day pricking through the briars. Sometimes, when she was much younger, 
She had seen an ancient fish swimming in and out of the chalk pit. Ancient fish from the time when the chalk was the land under the waves. The water had gone long, enough, long ago, but the souls of the ghost fish hadn't noticed. They were as armoured as knights and ancient as the chalk. But she didn't see him anymore. Perhaps your eyesight changes as you get older, she thought. There was a strong smell of garlic. A large part of the bottom of the pit was full of snails. Feagles were carefully walking among them, painting numbers on their shells. Amber was sitting next to the kelder with her hands clasped around her knees. Seen from above, it looked for all the world like the sheepdog trials, but with less barking and a lot more stickiness. The kelder spotted Tiffany and raised a tiny finger to her lips, followed by a brief nod at Amber, who is now engrossed in the proceedings. Jeannie patted the space on the other side of her and said, We are watching the lads putting our brand on the livestock, you can. There was a slight touch of strangeness to her voice. It was the kind of voice a grown-up uses when it tells a child, We are having fun, aren't we? In case the child hasn't reached that conclusion yet. But Amber really did look as if she was enjoying herself. It occurred to Tiffany that being around the Feagles seemed to make Amber happy. She got the impression that the Kelder wanted to keep the conversation light, so she simply asked, Why mark them? He's going to try and steal the snails. Other Feagles, of course. Ma Rob reckons that they'll be queuing up to steal our snails while they're left unprotected, you ken. Tiffany was mystified. Why would they be unprotected? Because, my lads, you can. They will be away stealing their livestock. It's an old feagle tradition. That means everyone getting lots of fighting, rustling and stealing, and, of course, the old-time favourite, boozing. The Kelder winked at Tiffany. Well, it keeps the lads happy and stops them fretting and getting under my feet, you know. She winked at Tiffany again and patted Amber on the leg and said something to her in the language that sounded like a very old version of Fiegel. Amber answered in the same language. The Kelder nodded meanfully at Tiffany and pointed to the other end of the pit. What did she just say to her? said Tiffany, looking back at the girl, who was still watching the Feagles with the same smiling interest. I told her that you and I were going to have a conversation for grown-ups, said the Kelder, and she just said the boys were very funny, and I don't know how, but she has picked up the mother of tongues. Tiffany, I only use it to a daughter in the Gonagall, you know, and I was talking to him on the mound last night. When she joined in, she picked it up just by listening. That shouldn't have happened, Tiffany. It's a rare gift that she has, and no mistake about her. She must ken the meanings in her head, and that's magic, Missy. It's the pure quell and no mistake. How could it happen now? Who knows? said the Kelder. Tis a gift, and if you take my advice, ye will set this girl to training. Isn't she a bit too old to be starting? said Tiffany. Put her to the craft, or find some channel for a gift. Believe me, my girl. I wouldn't want you to believe that beating a girl night on death is the good thing, but who can how our paths are chosen? And so she ended up here with me. She has the gift of understanding. Would she have found it else? You know full well that the meaning of life is to find your gift. To find your gift is happiness. Never to find it is misery. You said she's a bit simple. Find her a teacher who can bring out the complicated in her. The girl learned the difficult language just by listening to it. The world sore needs folk that can do that, you know. It made sense. Everything the Kelder said made sense. Jeanie paused and then said, I'm very sorry that your baron is dead. I'm sorry, Tiffany said. I'd, I'd meant to tell you. The Kelder smiled at her. Do you think that a Kelder would need to be told something like that, my girl? He was a decent man, and ye did right by him. I've got to go and find the new baron now, said Tiffany. And I'll need the boys to help me find him, please. There's thousands of people in the city and the lads are very good at finding things. She glanced up at the sky. Tiffany had never flown all the way to the big city before and didn't much fancy flying there in the darkness. I think I'll leave at first light, but first of all, Jeannie, I think I'd better take Amber back home. You'd like that, wouldn't you, Amber? She said, hopelessly. Three quarters of an hour later, Tiffany flew her stick back down towards the village, the screams still ringing in her head. Amber wasn't going back. 
She had, in fact, made her reluctance to leave the mound abundantly clear by bracing her arms and legs in the hole and staying there screaming at the top of her voice every time Tiffany gave a gentle pull. When she let girl, the girl go, the girl went back to sit next to the kelder. So that was that. You try to make plans for people and then people make other plans. However you looked at it, Amber had parents. Pretty awful parents, you might say, and you might add that that was giving them the best of it. At least they had to know that she was safe. And in any case, what possible harm could come to Amber in the care of the Kelder? Terry, that sounds ominous. Why have you left me with a little um, ellipsis after that bit? <laughs> oh, sorry. That was juicy. Hay thievery out there today. Anyway, there you go. 15 minutes today. Gosh, maybe it's because I did all that talking at the start. Right. So today for me is Saturday, Sticky Saturday, it shall be here by known as. Tomorrow is Stickier Sunday. It's supposed to get hotter tomorrow, only by a couple of degrees, but poof, super hot. Hey, um, so Blake is at a festival all by himself this weekend. He's, he's a big boy, he's braver than I am. He took himself on a train all the way down there, multiple changes. And, um, yeah, he's made friends there. I I would have to, oh my goodness, I don't know the amount of organisation that my brain would need if I was going to do that, and I would not go on my own. I'm not, you may be surprised to hear, a very sociable chap. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I couldn't do it on my own. But, yeah, so Blake has gone. It's a festival called Download Festival. Bit of rock, bit of heavy metal. He loves it. He's having a great time, but... um. Yeah, I just thought I'd let you know. Just the life of Mr. S. All right, okay. I'll see you tomorrow for Stickier Sunday. And in the meantime, Noah, Tess, sleep well.